Hey everybody, welcome to Uninfluence. This ain't questions and answers, that's later. Y'all make sure to <clears throat> tune in, not stay tuned, tune in Mondays for questions and answers. So for those of y'all asking, in the very beginning, I'm going to go on and do this. Ask.uninfluenced at gmail.com with, with your questions. Hit us up, it's also in the description. we got a lot of good ones coming up in the next episode airing on Monday, 9 Central Time. So keep that shit in mind. Uh, today's been a very special day for us. Uh, we had a Mike had a good recording go on earlier today. Uh, also got one live as we record right now with Mister Rob O'Neill. Uh, that <coughs> that one's doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was good having Rob on. It was uh, for those that maybe watched and said, "Why didn't you cover this or that or whatever." Excuse me. One thing you probably notice is me saying we don't have a lot of time. I, I mentioned that a few different times during the show. Is that when, when we originally booked it, he he actually said I only have an hour and thirty minutes of time for you. So that changed how I approached the entire interview. So uh, just as a heads up. And then as we got to that hour and a half, he's like, "No, you can go a little further." Blah blah blah. So. Anyway, for those of you saying, why didn't you ask him this? Why didn't you ask him? There's a million fucking questions I would have liked to have asked him. Uh, I just didn't have a ton of time with him. So uh, hopefully we can get him back in, uh, actually in the studio for a longer period of time and and go uh, go in depth on some other things. But uh, but it was good having him on finally. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, I looked and I searched and I was like, man, I thought you had him on before, but you didn't. I'm a horrible person. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm yeah. Pretty terrible. Pretty shitty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so we're going to get into what happened today. No, we're not. Uh, but it was an exciting day we had going. A lot of you guys have some guesses, and your answers will be revealed uh, probably this week or next, I would say. Yeah. Depending on editing, producing, all that stuff, you know, th those guys suck. Yeah. Um, but it's all based on that. Uh, we got some really cool footage of it and – just say some really, really good shit happened today, and we couldn't be more happy. Or I couldn't be. I don't know about no, you. I'm fucking stoked, man. Yeah. So uh, we'll get into a little bit about this Ukraine stuff. I don't want to get too too deep into it. I know people keep asking, when do y'all record? Why didn't y'all talk about Ukraine? Blah, blah, blah. We record on Mondays. These are not live episodes. We record on Mondays, and then we put it out to you guys. We try to be as updated as possible on current events but we're not going to come in and record on tuesday and wednesday just to try to get them out it'd kill our producers and kill us eventually yeah uh but we'll get into that a little bit later I do want to talk about you brought this up last time then new york now is using cameras with microphones to ticket exhaust and shit yeah i mean of all the things to be worried about the state-run government of new york has decided that that that's a priority which to me is baffling with all the other shit that they have going on there crime wise that's what they're spending money and resources on it's pretty fucking retarded but whatever yeah that's new york for you i, I just don't get it i mean i understand trying to crack down a little bit on certain things but exhaust come on it can be annoying. I, I even agree. At times, it can be very annoying. But nowadays, there's valve systems that shut down. Well, uh, sorry. But it's still your freedom to do shit to your car to a point. I, no, I mean, to me, I, I disagree with it entirely. Like, I don't even see it to a point. Is that there are a lot of things that people do that annoy the fucking shit out of me. That's I don't true. think it should be illegal. That's true. You know, like, you can do all kinds of shit. You know, say whatever you want on social media. You can fucking threaten me and my family. You can talk all the fucking shit you want, but you can't have an exhaust above a certain decibel. Like, to me, that's fucking stupid. Yeah. You know, uh, and and I'm not saying if it's Ill illegal to do that, it should be illegal to do this. I'm saying the opposite is that if it's okay to tell somebody you want to skin their fucking kids alive o over the Internet, and that's fine, you ought to be able to have a loud fucking exhaust. You yeah. Know? Um now, keep in mind, those of y'all, I'm saying I see it both ways, but every fucking vehicle I have except for my new daily is fucking loud as shit uh, because I just like loud, obnoxious shit. Yeah. I want I want y'all to be like, knock, knock, motherfucker, I'm coming. Yeah. You know? Uh, <clears throat> and there are, the reason I'm a big fan of the valving of exhaust is 
like when I go into say your neighborhood or friend's neighborhood, I don't want it to be as loud as I'm fucking normally am. Yeah. I want to be able, but that's my personal preference. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, I don't like to have an exhaust that's so loud that I've got to be careful of what time I pull, pull in the driveway or start it up or whatever. And, uh, and there's a fine line between that, you know, so, yeah. but, uh, but I, I, on the same token, that's just my preference. I want to be, excuse me, mindful of the neighbors. I think, you know, driving down a fucking interstate, who gives a shit how loud it is, you know? Uh, I don't know. It's just dumb. I yeah. Think, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a silly rule. Um, uh, there was another fucking silly rule I was going to come up with. Taxes? It's pretty silly. Taxes thing. are fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to return a little bit to that uh, ship that was on fire that had a bunch of Audis. The Audi group, or Volkswagen group, had a bunch of cars on it. And some people are in there, oh, Bentley's part of blah, blah, blah. Bentley's still under Volkswagen's umbrella. I don't care if they build that motherfucker in Australia or wherever the fuck it's built, it's still under their umbrella. And some of those cars were on it. I read an article in a Lamborghini group, and I'm not 100% sure I've got people checking on it, but they said the last built Aventadors were on that. No shit. Yeah, the last run of Aventadors were on that boat. Ain't that a bitch. And if that's the case, what? so the article said from this was the president, and I'm air quoting for those of y'all that can't see, just listen, but – the president of Lamborghini was saying they're uncertain if they're going to rebuild those models mm. or if they're just going to give the people who had them on consignment or not consignment on a order, give them the chance at the replacement model before anybody else. And I brought up, or what are they going to do with the Porsches? And that kind of leads me to believe it's going to kind of be the same thing with the Porsches to where they're all right, back of the bus. Yeah. And, we're yeah. going to do this. Was there anything you hated about your build that we've added to these now that you want to do? Yeah. But cool. you're still back at two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, yeah. what would you do in that situation? If your car, you've been waiting two years, caught on fire, and you knew, now nah, it's two more years. Yeah, it depends on what else I have. That's a, that's a good question. The, uh, I, I think if, you know, if I had something else that was – what I wanted and, and was okay with saying, yeah, fuck it. I'll wait another two years. Then I would, uh, if I didn't, and I, it was like, I got rid of shit to get that. And I was waiting and then they're like, Oh, sorry. I'd be like, give me my money back and I'll go get something else. Cause yeah. you know, if I, if I have nothing else to drive or, you know, money wise, it's wrapped up into that to where I, I can't get anything other than that. Then, then I'd say, fuck it. Yeah. But. <clears throat> I'm the same way. I'm, I don't like waiting on shit. Yeah. That's why I, I probably, I don't know if I'll ever have a spec'd out car that I spec that's of that level because they tell me when I'm done it. Okay, cool. It's going to be 12 to 18 months, man. Fuck you. Well, yeah. I mean, having done it once through Porsche, uh, granted it was the Cayenne turbo, but, but similarly, like I, I waited for a long fucking time. You know, I put a deposit down and spec'd it all out and, and ordered every, everything exactly how I wanted. And by the time it got here, I was almost kind of over it. Like mm -hmm. it took that fucking long. I was just like, dude, I don't even care anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, just so many things had, had come and gone since then and, and other shit had come out and, and whatever. Um, I, I think the only time, the only situation or circumstance I could see doing that again is if, again, like if financially I was at a point where I, like I was starting to collect cars and, and, and already had, you know, one or several that I really liked that was driving the shit out of them and, uh, and decided to, you know, spec something that was really special out. Like if it was a limited, you know, 500 or a thousand only being made and it's the last of whatever the fuck, you know, and it's a special track edition, you know, whatever, so, something like that. I could see doing it then again, if I had both the finances and other options to drive, you know, but that's really, I think, the only circumstance where I would spec something out again. Yeah. It's, uh, both of us are very <coughs> impatient fucking people. Uh, yeah, we got, we got that, uh, last, uh, last few days mm -hmm. showcasing. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's tough. So multiple event doors were inside the Felicity Ace. Ain't that a bitch? Well, Man, I wonder what the wait time is on that. Uh, hey, we're going to clip this and uh, add it 
into the description. We're going to work on being able to add in stuff like this so y'all can see what we're looking at. We're kind of just making sure the program's working right before we do it. But, I mean, there was STOs, uh, at least one STO. Uh, Don, what the hell was Don Wyro talking about? Was there a Wyro on that bitch? I doubt it. I mean, I mean, maybe, I guess. It's, you know, from Italy, right? So. Oh, car collector, okay. Yeah, man, it's a that's a messed up situation. I mean, unfortunately, that happened, and it's a bad situation for everybody. The people who ordered the cars and the people who built the cars, because some of these are hand built cars that someone put a lot of fucking <clears throat> passion and time into, and then you got the company. Yeah, they're going to get an insurance check out of it, but it's also going to come down to was one of the cars wired wrong, and. It sparked something, caught it on fire, and then... Yeah, well, so, so some initial reports I saw, and I don't know if if there's been any further info put out on it, but that there were some EVs on there, and it was the EV batteries that started on fire. See, and then you got to wonder, because you know they're all insured separately, yeah. but you got to wonder how that's going to play out with the umbrella of the company being like, fuck it, we'll just take the whole loss and not deal with it, or... Probably. I mean, if, if it were me that... That, that amount of money was an insurance claim and, and a drop in the bucket essentially yeah I would just cut cut the loss as a whole and, and say you know and I don't know what the intricacies are of you know obviously the the ship has insurance the auto company has insurance you know in, in that case does it depend on you know how it started and if it's somebody's fault or not or I mean mm-hmm. who, who knows I'm sure all of those things are, are probably uh what makes you know decisions like that made as to how they they move forward with it well it's interesting to see that it could have been the electric batteries on the evs yeah because that would explain a lot of why they didn't rush out there to put the fucking fires out too because that yeah. lithium and shit the way it burns is way different than yeah. than a normal fire better throw some baking powder on that shit yeah and some was it was what on that shit creek <laughs> uh yeah, so that's a really, really unfortunate incident that's happening over there. Um, oh, there's another one about Bugatti, but who knows if there was any Bugattis on there? Probably like, nah, bitch. Who um, fucking knows? Yeah, it's it's wild out there. Um, it's wild out in the parking lot right now. I'll tell you that. It really is. Sure as fuck. A bunch of crazy shit happening crazy out there. Crazy shit. Uh, Talk about that shit. I really want to. <laughs> I think we should just talk about it. Yeah. I mean, you want to? I, well, this is coming out Wednesday. Yeah. Is the review? I mean, producer, you tell me, is the fucking shit, is that shit going to be ready by Wednesday? I mean, can it be all one thing? We can make it ready. Okay. That's the can do fucking attitude I'm talking yeah. about. I like your attitude. I don't it care. Won't what fit. It I'll make it fit. Yeah. <clears throat> sure. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Been ready. Okay. Your mom's been ready. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can leave that in, too. <laughs> <laughs> she can leave it in. Yeah. yeah. You can let it soak inside her. Um, so, we were going to tease it and tease it and tease it. and uh, But nobody likes a tease. Yeah, nobody likes a tease. Uh, my wife being pregnant, I get that shit all the time. You know, like, <laughs> I can't do shit. Uh, so, we got some stuff in today. Uh, it was bittersweet to do as well because... We got, I don't even want to say what all came in, but Mike didn't get to experience the full offload of what was going on. So it's cool to me for me to be able to surprise him towards the yeah. getting to see him. But it was also kind of sucky not to get to see the truck open and shit like that. Yeah, I mean, I actually, in in, in the interest of always trying to find the silver lining or, or find – you know, the good out of, out of whatever is that the way I thought about it is at first I was like, fuck, I'm not going to be able to, to see the unloading of it. But that lasted about a half a second. And then I thought about it and I was like, the reason that I can't is the reason that they're being unloaded. Exactly. You know, so that's not a, a, a problem to have. It's like that, that's that in conjunction with everything else is, is why I have the ability to, to have it in the first place. So I, I, kind of relish the fact that like I'm, I'm putting the priority on what 
what it takes to to have that and and to be able to have it delivered so um you know I, to me it was kind of neat actually yeah but <clears throat> and i don't do shit so i was able to <laughs> get to, i had a window in my schedule uh, open up so no so it, it was very cool to be able to do this video for essentially mike and for me a memory and for you guys to see what the hell i would say we're close to a month right now of just working on this deal yeah. getting it together getting it get them all here and it's uh without further ado uh producer is going to put this together for y'all and here you go but anyways we've been working on this for a month now uh something very special we can't wait to show you guys mike's in the middle of recording right now so i'm having to do this this part all alone uh so i'm going to do this but later on in the video we're going to get mike's reaction as he sees what we got what we got coming for the first time in person so i'm gonna get some unloading videos and all that as well so uh yeah it should be really good guys we're excited to show you show all you guys this hang tight Okay, so everybody, Mike's been waiting a cup, about a month for this, yeah. and it's here. Let's see. If I can check it out. Would you look at the ass on that? Yeah. yeah so uh, which, which one is which? Well, <laughs> this one's all you. No, I thought I thought that was mine. No, they think that one's you. Are you, are you getting all this on fucking? Uh, <laughs> So here, here it is. What, uh, so for, for all of you guys that, that had guesses, uh, we saw several guesses for me getting this, right? And I think at one point, or maybe even in several instances on the show, I've said I would never get a McLaren. Mm -hmm. uh, just like... So you'd never get uh, you'd never get another one, right? I said I'd never get another one, and we've always said there's only one Lamborghini we would put in the stables. Yeah, yeah. and we've both said that, so I can I can see why some of you would have assumed that, that this would be mine, but uh, it's not. So there you have it. So that one's got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's the big fucking reveal. So yeah. the uh, did, have you talked about it all? So no, I just unloaded them and. Oh, I guess, uh, if you want to fucking give the quick walk around on yours. All right. So this is a 2018 Lamborghini Performante with a VF supercharger. It's got rift wheels on it already and JP Performance suspension on it. Should be pushing, they say 850 and with E85 mix, it's going to be pushing around 900, 925. The car, we've never said anything negative about this car. In fact, we've said this would probably be the perfect car competitor to the Pista for the money, uh, especially with the VF Supercharger. So, as fate would have it, I'm looking for a car and I find this one. 
and I had no idea he's even looking for a car. And then one day we send each other these cars we're looking at, and about an hour later we both noticed, fuck, they're at the same dealership across the country. So we started working the deals, and uh, here's the perf. Uh, so we're gonna get you guys a lot of coverage on that. And then Mike got this beautiful monster right here. So, gotcha, bitches. Yeah. So we uh, we trick fucked you a little bit, kind of on purpose, but. Um... You know, in, in the uh, in the quest for keeping shit stock, uh, other than having a supercharged R8 that I had, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, that that really, you know, there was there was nothing wrong with it. The only thing um, that I didn't like was the handling. Um, and, and even then, looking back on it, it was before I I twin turboed it. It was before I, you know, did uh, you know meth and exhaust and everything on a 911 to make it, you know, pushing 750, 800 horse uh, to the wheels and. You know, it was kind of a, a growing experience for me in, in in coming to the realization that you know speed isn't everything. You know handling and braking and uh, the the way that that it, it absorbs speed at, at high you know 180 and above speeds and, and the mileage that it gets and how it drives. You know whether or not it drives truly stock if it has problems or not. And and for me like the, the piece that's kind of taught me a, a lot of those things and that um, you know keeping it stock or close to it. Uh, is, is more important because it doesn't have any issues, you know, and, and I, I've had nothing but problems with everything that I've started fucking with, with the exception of the uh, of the supercharged R8, but again, at, at once you hit about 130 or 140 in that car, the handling, you, you, you can tell it, it lacks in downforce and arrow and, and splitter and diffuser type technology that, uh, that this, you know, is, is monstrously capable on as well as the McLaren, so I, uh, I got the 765 LT, which it even, even says that on the key there, which is kind of neat. Uh, there's not a lot of these, obviously. There's only 765 of them. And uh, I, I haven't been much of a McLaren fan until I talked Matt into, or sort of talked Matt into getting another one and then drove it. And I was like, man, this thing's actually fucking awesome. Uh, once it was dialed in right and, and tuned and, and Kind of everything was the way that it needed to be. Uh, I wanted that level of performance, but stock, and that's what this brings to the table. I watched a shitload of reviews and did a lot of research on them, um, and and finally found uh, one that, that was also a color that I liked. While I'm not really a purple doors up car kind of guy, there was just something about this that really uh, kind of stuck out as being what uh, what I liked, and it just really really struck me. And so so we went after it, and again we found uh, a place. This guy Alex at, uh, at Elite Motor Cars that Elite Motor Car Elite Motor Cars Elite Motor Cars that uh, that you know took good care of us and, and was a, a great experience to work with and uh, and and both of these were his personal cars so we kind of cleaned them out but uh, looking forward to bringing you some good content on both of them and uh, my plan like like with the piece is just to leave this stock I, I don't want to mess with it and, and uh, start start the, uh, the the daisy chain of fucking mechanical problems that I have on everything else I've messed with. So uh, looking forward to, to getting this party started and showing you showing you all the good shit. So And my plan is to fuck shit up. <laughs>
So, guys, surprise. There you go. You guys were really close. Some of y'all were really, really close on one of the cars coming. You just had the wrong owner. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and nobody guessed what the hell Mike was getting. Yeah. But, I mean, there were some really close – Yeah. Some really close things happening there. And, um, yeah. and yeah, I mean, in, in talking about it, I mean, that's, uh, you know, we've both kind of eaten crow or, you know, eaten our words, whatever you want to call it, uh, a couple of times now. I, I, I need to just stop saying I would never get this or I don't like this, you know, whatever, because here I am. You know, I said multiple times that uh, I wasn't a McLaren guy and, and don't like him and wouldn't have one and, and what have you. Now, I will say – that was based off of my experience with them, which the 720S is a phenomenal fucking car. Mm-hmm. There, there are just a couple things about it that, um, that for me to, to enjoy aren't, aren't quite where I want them to be. And, and I would say it's overwhelmingly because of having the piece to for over a year now, it's just made my preferences for the driving experience very specific. And the difference between the 765 LT and the 720S is just like the difference between a Huracan and a Perfomonte, the difference between a 488 GTB and a 488 Pista. Anytime any of these car brands take a really good, well-rounded car and turn use that as the foundation and turn it into a, a track-focused version of that, that is fucking absolutely what I love. You know, In all three cases, the Pista, the Perfomonte, and the 765 LT, to me, I don't know why this just dawned on me, but we have all three of them, mm-hmm. which is fucking crazy, yep. uh, you know. But th- like th- those three cars, I-, I don't think you can beat, you know. Then they're all three different, you know. They're they're similar but different enough to have their own personality and, and enjoy them in their own way. Um, but they're they're three of of the most masterfully engineered and and put together driving cars that i would say probably have ever existed and damn sure are out right now i can't think of anything that that tops any of them no i think they're the three best cars out there yeah they they all have a bigger brother well the pista really don't the other two have a bigger brother a more hyper car but when it comes to actual performance numbers and shit you see those two, the 765, the Perfermonte, and the Pista, which don't have the bigger brother, because to me it would be the law of Ferrari, and it's just, well, I guess now the SF90 kind of. Yeah. I mean, in either case, though, with, with both of those, they're they're not just internal combustion engines, no. though, you know, so yeah. I, I would agree, like, you know, the, the Ferrari has the Aventador, um, the McLaren, you could say it has the P1, but I, honestly. Or the Senna. Or yeah, I'm sorry, the Senna, not the P1. But you know, there, there's been enough tests of of the Senna and the 765 where the 765 is faster than it's the a Senna on, on a, in a straight line. You yeah. know, um, depending on what track it is, the, the Senna is is a better if you're actually on the track. And maybe that's the I- irony of this is that I like the track focused cars, but for the the street. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and I think for for a street car, I would much much rather have a seven six five than a than a Senna all day long. Oh yeah, all, all fucking day long. Unless they put comfort <clears throat> seats in the Senna, that would change me a little bit. Maybe, but still, yeah. I think looks wise and everything else. Yeah, I, I think the seven six. I think the seven six five is the most rounded McLaren I've seen, and I've sat there and we're gonna do a video uh, showing the difference between a seven twenty and a seven six five. But I sat there for weeks picking apart stuff that i found different on mike's car versus 720 looking picture to picture finding things it, it's really really fucking neat um quick story before we do in this i started looking at another car it wasn't that i was unhappy with the 720 it's just mike kind of said hey man you should find the car that makes you happy and truly happy and you guys don't realize it takes a lot for me to get excited about something we get a lot of shit in. So I start looking for this car, and I'm helping another friend in Dallas. Uh, he's looking for a car. So I find him these two cars. He picks one, and immediately I knew what I wanted, and I went for the other one. So I kind of told Mike about it, and the next thing I know, Mike messages me, and he starts talking about the 765, and then he sends me the picture. And it was a couple hours later, or maybe an hour or so, I looked, and I'm like, hold up. And I went to the dealer website. I said, 
Bro, both these are at the same dealer. We're both looking at a dealer across the country at two different cars. Had no idea either, each other's even looking at that dealer. And uh, come to find out the actual owner, which is Elite Motor Cars, they these were his personal cars and very well taken care of. The Mine has some upgrades. His is PPF'd, and whoever is doing his work is fucking phenomenal at doing their jobs. Uh, so... You got anything else to add? Not really, other than just, uh, <clears throat> here's what I will say, is that you can rest the fuck assured. We've got the cameras. We've got the fucking producer that's got all the fucking right shit for it. I mean, everything's lined up for us to bring you legit fucking road content of these things, and uh, and you can, you can count on seeing it. Uh, the weather today is finally nice enough to do a little bit of driving. Um, hopefully this weekend it'll be warm enough. The one thing with with all three of these cars, frankly, is, is that that is the one big limiting factor that, that right now, like this winter here in Texas is, is colder than, than usual. And from a driving condition standpoint, excuse me, the, uh, the tires just don't have enough temperature in them to drive them, uh, and, and push them super hard. So until the roads are warm enough to get the tires hot enough to grip, uh, there's some things we just can't do in them, uh, the way we want, but Yep. But rest the fuck assured, you're going to see some content with a supercharged Perfamante, a 7.65 LT, and a fucking 488 Pista. So um, um, I and, and we are excited to bring bring that shit to you. Hell yeah. You guys make sure to tune in. Those will actually be separate videos normally going up on the channel. We may throw clips here and there into the podcast, uh, but it's hard for you, the people listening on just the podcast side to really enjoy those. So make sure you go to the YouTube, subscribe, and you'll see those bonus videos coming up. Uh, also, remember the Mondays, we're doing the Ask Q&As. Uh, you email us, askuninfluenced at gmail.com, and we're getting to them. we got a lot, lot of questions, and we're going to slowly, as they're coming in, we're going to go up the list and answer them as they're coming in. So, guys, we truly appreciate all you guys do for us to support the love and everything else. And that's it for this episode. Peace, bitches. this way.